Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today is going to be a great segment on implied volatility and standard deviation and how the two relate to each other. And when I've been talking on my previous whiteboards, I've been th saying things like when implied volatility expands, you'll see those probabilities expand on those outer wings of the strikes. So we're gonna talk about exactly how that happens today, what implied volatility really implies, and how we use standard deviation to put context around implied volatility. So on the very first slide here, we're just going to talk about what these two things are. So if we review what implied volatility is, it is a metric that's derived from option prices. It's not something that we know and we input into the Black-Scholes model. It's actually something that comes out of all the other variables that we do know, such as the options price and how that's affected in that Black-Scholes model. We can solve for implied volatility or get very close to implied volatility or what is perceived as that implied volatility. So what is this implied volatility value anyways? Well, it really is just an indication of perceived future volatility of an underlying. So it's really interesting in the sense that we use the, this underlying's option market to determine what the perceived future volatility of that underlying is based on the price action of the options market. So when we're looking at implied volatility, we're really looking at the expressed one standard deviation percentage on an annual basis. So as a quick example, if I've got a $50 stock and that stock has a 20% implied volatility, that means that over the course of a year, we have a $50 stock that has a 20% implied volatility, which would mean it would range 10 points to the upside or 10 points to the downside with a 68% probability or 68% of those occurrences would occur within that range. So we're looking at a one standard deviation annual expression that's a percentage, and that's just the implied volatility. It's not guaranteed, it's not anything that should be taken for the literal meaning for it, but it's just a gauge to see where the prices of the options are indicating that that stock might go. So when option prices are higher, implied volatility is going to be higher, and when option prices are lower than they normally are, implied volatility is going to be lower as well. And implied volatility is obviously a living, breathing thing. It can change and does change every single day. So what are these standard deviation values that we keep referring to? Well, standard deviation is really just how occurrences deviate from the mean of the occurrences. So if I've got 10,000 occurrences that I've randomized through that same exact stock, we're usually going to see a lot of smaller movements. So we're going to see a bell curve where a lot of the smaller movements are going to occur just around that 50 strike, maybe 49 to 51, we'll see a ton of occurrences there. But we're also going to see those outlier movements that go all the way to 100 or maybe all the, go all the way to zero or when their stock would theoretically go bankrupt. So we're looking at the standard deviation of those occurrences and we're really just putting context around where those prices are. So when we're looking at a one standard deviation level, we're capturing the range of 68% of those occurrences. So one standard deviation would be on the upside and the downside of that bell curve and we're really just looking at what levels would capture 68% of those occurrences. Two standard deviations would capture the range of 95% of those occurrences. So we're capturing almost all of those occurrences. We do have a few more outliers beyond that, but when we're looking at two standard deviations, we're pretty much capturing the essence of what is implied or what could potentially happen, which is why we look at these values in the option market. We like to look at one standard deviation ranges when we're placing new trades, and usually when we look at two standard deviation levels, it's usually an indication of perceived max loss. So like when a brokerage is looking at calculating a buying power reduction or a margin on a certain position, they might calculate it from two standard deviations and gauge it from there depending on a person's profile in their account or whatnot. But when we're looking at these two different values here, this is, these are the two most common values you'll see when we're looking at options trading. So how can we tie these together? Well, on the next slide, we're going to start to visualize exactly how this works. So we're gonna look at an at the money position, and I want you to view the 
vertical axis here as the percentage. So when we're looking at out of the money options going up to at the money options, we're going to have the further out of the money options are going to be the closest to 0% of being in the money. And when we go to the at the money options here, we're going to have the highest percentage, which is going to be around 50% of that option being in the money. So if I look at out of the money calls on the downside here, and out of the money, or I'm sorry, out of the money puts on the downside here, and out of the money calls on the upside here, we're going to reach our peak of our probability of being in the money of 50% right at the top of the bell curve here. So like we were talking about before, one standard deviation is going to capture about 68% of the occurrences that have deviated from this mean price here. So I want you to visualize the very middle of this bell curve graph as the mean price of the underlying. And one standard deviation captures 68% of the movements outside of that mean, regardless of whether it was to the downside or the upside, one standard deviation will be looking at about 68% of those occurrences and where that range would fall. As we move further out of the money, as you know, when we're looking at out of the money calls, that just means that it's even further above the current stock price. And with puts, it's even further below the stock price. But when we're looking at two standard deviations, we're capturing 95% of those occurrences. So as you can see, the range is much, much wider. When we're looking at a two standard deviation, level when we compare that to a one standard deviation. And we're going to have a lot more occurrences within this range than we would on this outside range here because of course, the further and further we go above where the stock price is currently trading and the further and further we go below where the stock price is currently trading, we get to those outlier moves or maybe even further than this is what we would consider to be something like a black swan event or tail risk if you will. So these are the different ranges, and I've got these probabilities up here because this is really how it relates to our options trading. So when we're looking at one standard deviation values, if I'm looking at just one side of the market, so for example, if I'm looking at selling an out of the money call, and I wanna sell a one standard deviation out of the money call, I would be looking at a probability of 16% of being in the money. That is what directly correlates to capturing this range here. Now, if I take that same value, 16% in the money, and I know where exactly where it is on the call side, and I look to sell a put as well at the one standard deviation level, which would be 16% of being in the money on that put side if I'm selling the put, what you'll see is that if I add those two values together, which would give me 16% on this side, 16% on that side, add those two together, I now have a 32% probability of being in the money. Now if you look at this value, 68%, when I compare that to 32%, if I add these two values together, I get 100%. So as you see, if I have a value of 32% of being in the money with one standard deviation, then I must have a percentage that covers that whole range of 68% of being out of the money. So that's how these two values relate. When we're looking at just one side of the market, we can look at the 16% probability on one side of being in the money and 16% probability on the other side. But when I combine those two values together, I have to add the probability of being in the money together and take the inverse to capture or give myself a, a good idea of what sort of range I'm capturing. So if I'm adding these two together and selling a strangle, for example, which is exactly what this would be, I would be capturing that 32% probability of being in the money and that would give me a range of about 68% of the occurrences, which is exactly why we call it a one standard deviation range when we're looking at that strangle in this example. Now for a two standard deviation, it's even further out of the money, which means that it's going to have a smaller percentage of being in the money. So if I'm looking at selling a two standard deviation call, I would be looking at a call that has a probability of 2.5% of being in the money you know it's going to be much lower, a much lower percentage of being in the money because it's much, much higher on the strike bar here. If we imagine this is our strike bar and I'm looking to sell an out of the money call, of course, a two standard deviation call is going to be much further out of the money than a one standard deviation call. But just like the one standard deviation calculation, if I were to sell a two standard deviation strangle where I'm selling a two standard deviation call on the upside and a two standard deviation call on the downside for the put, 
I would have to add those two together, which is which is what gives me that 5% per, uh, chance of being in the money, because I've got 2% on one side, 2% on the other. Add those together, I get 5%. And that's what gives me that coverage of 90%, 95% of the occurrences. I'm just looking at 5%, subtracting that from 100, and that gives me that 95% occurrence range. So when we're looking at the standard deviation or two standard deviation, we're going to have different ranges and occurrences that fall within that range. And of course, when we're looking at in the money, if you want to calculate what percentage would be out of the money. So for example, on the Doe platform, we look at percentage of being out of the money. So if I know that a 16% probability of being in the money would give me a one standard deviation level, that means that an 84% probability of being out of the money would get me that very same level. And just like with one standard deviation, we can do the same thing with two standard deviations. So with two standard deviations, if I have 2.5% chance of being in the money, which gives me that two standard deviation level, I just take the opposite of that or inverse of that from 100, which gives me 97.5% of being out of the money. So depending on what you like to look at, if you're using the Thinkorswim platform and you look at probability of being in the money, or if you use the Doe platform and you look at probability of being out of the money, these are gonna be the values that you're looking for on either side of the market to determine those standard deviation ranges. So how does implied volatility change standard deviation? Well, on the next slide, I'm gonna show you two different environments. So I want you to envision this first environment here as our low IV environment. So picture that balloon being a small balloon with not a lot of inflation in there. And we're gonna compare it against our high volatility environment, which is where we take the balloon and we expand it more. Because we refer to IV as expansion, and contraction. So when we want implied volatility to expand, or when IV is already expanded, it's usually going to be in a high IV environment. And when it contracts, that usually brings it to a lower IV environment. So let's first talk about the low IV environment. I've still got these values here, and I want you to envision a stock price trading at 100. If I've got a low implied volatility environment, my one standard deviation levels could theoretically be somewhere around 105 and 95. So that gives me five points to the upside, and if I'm looking at the probabilities, let's say I'm on the dope platform and I'm looking at the strike of, I'm looking to sell a one standard deviation strangle. So I'm in this low volatility environment, and based on the probabilities, I've got a one standard deviation mark when I'm looking to sell an out of the money call at the 105 strike, and if I go to sell an out of the money put, I'm looking at that same 84% chance of being out of the money, which would give me that one standard deviation mark, and that's going to be at 95. So as you can see, in a low volatility environment, if I'm looking to sell a one standard deviation strangle, I might be able to cover this 10 point range. So I might be able to sell a put at 95 and sell a call at 105 to capture that one standard deviation or the deviation of occurrences from that mean price of 100. Now, how does this change when implied volatility increases? Well, as you can see, the bell curve changes itself. So in the low volatility environment, most of our occurrences are going to happen right around where the stock price is. If we don't think that there's going to be a lot of movement in the stock, which basically just means that we have a low volatility environment, then a lot of the occurrences, if we generate a number of them, are going to be right around the, the stock price here. Of course, we're always going to have those tail risk events, but when we have a low volatility environment, we don't perceive the tail risk events to be very large. But when we have a high volatility environment, you can see how drastically this changes our one standard deviation and two standard deviation lines. So in this higher volatility environment, now I'm looking at these probabilities and I'm going all the way to 120 and I'm looking at the one standard deviation mark. So in a higher volatility environment, I might be able to capture 84% chance of being out of the money by selling a call on the upside at the 120 strike as opposed to the 105 strike in a low volatility environment. And on the downside, I might be able to capture that 84% chance of being out of the money for selling a put at the 80 strike, which is giving me that one standard deviation range, compared to the 95 strike in a low volatility environment. So this is the power of implied volatility and its effect on standard deviation. And standard deviation just gives us context around implied volatility. As you can see, implied volatility is much higher 
in the bottom graph here, which gives us that big wide range of 20 points to the upside and 20 points to the downside, compared to that low volatility environment where we're only getting five points to the upside and five points to the downside. So this is one big reason why we like selling premium in high IV environments. We can get much, much further away from that stock price and still obtain that one standard deviation range. And of course, if we sell our strikes here for a certain value and implied volatility contracts to these values, then we're going to be in a good situation because we've got our strikes way out here, even though implied volatility is only implying movement in this range here. So let's wrap all this up with some takeaways for you. The very first takeaway here is again, implied volatility is a perception of future stock movement. It's not anything that's guaranteed, it's just a way to analyze the option price market and option price movement within that market to gauge exactly where the, these traders think that an underlying is going to go. Standard deviation is just a way to put context around implied volatility. Just like IV rank gives us context around implied volatility and so does IV percentile, standard deviation gives us context around those strike prices and how implied volatility will affect that those ranges. And it, of course, higher implied volatility environments allow us to move much, much further away from that stock price and still get that one standard deviation range as you saw as exemplified in that second and first graph there. So thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed this segment. If you've got any questions or feedback, shoot me an email here or follow me on Twitter at Mike. We've got Jim Schultz coming up next though, so stay tuned and have a great weekend.